Welcome back to American Agenda. We continue to monitor the news of the helicopter crash that killed the Iranian president and foreign minister. Yeah, that's right. Iran is saying technical failure caused the crash. Joining us now to give us their expertise, our Republican congressional candidate, a national security and Mideast expert, Dr. Zudi Jasser and Black Hawk helicopter pilot and battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Uh, Colonel, I'm going to start with you. You've flown these types of helicopters, very familiar with them. Just, you, you know, off the cuff here, what, what do you think actually happened? Hey, Bobby, good afternoon. It's great to join you again. Uh, when I looked at it purely from the evidence of, of video without being there clearly, uh, I saw a scenario that I've seen many times in Army aviation, which is unfortunately a an aircraft flying through mountains in foggy conditions, potentially slight darkness. I, I don't know the training level, but typically it's not very good in Iran as far as the pilots are concerned themselves probably some command pressure, uh, whatever you want to call that, as far as like the uh, the nature of who they were carrying and the, and the push to get the job done regardless. I think typically what happens is those come together to create a very dangerous scenario. And without the right people and the controls of the aircraft, it's very easy to run into a mountain, which is exactly what it looks like. And I think that's where I'm going to say is most likely what did happen. And so, But we'll see what the investigation says when it's done. Dr. Jasser, uh, we also know that Iran's former foreign minister is perhaps not surprisingly blaming U.S. sanctions specifically for this crash. Here is the statement. Uh, one of the main culprits of yesterday's tragedy is the United States. Uh, they go on to say these will be recorded in the list of U.S. crimes against the Iranian people, again, blaming U.S. sanctions. But once again, the sanctions didn't happen uh, out of thin air, so to speak. There's certainly reasons. Do you think that any of this, the ongoing challenge that the United States is having on the world stage, how do you tie that back to this current administration? Yeah, I mean, clearly none of the revolutionaries in Iran are shedding any tears. None of the free world will shed any tears that the hanging judge who then became the attorney general and then was responsible for the uh, attempt to, to suppress the revolution in 22 and 23 that Raisi's dead. But ultimately, uh, you know, they're going to blame the sanctions. And, and here we are in an effort in a war in against Hamas, supporting our greatest ally in the world, Israel, all at what happened through the arming of Iran, Iran through uh, channels that were unknown, but to Hamas. So ultimately, it's quite a, a lot of chutzpah, if you will, for them to blame sanctions for, you know, so what? They shouldn't be traveling. So what? They should not have the resources for their military or their government because of what they, the, the terror sponsoring that they do through the IRGC, through Yemen, through, South, you know, all over the Middle East and around the world, and especially now. In the, into the seventh, eighth month of this war as they try to wipe out Hamas and Israel, which is exactly what Israel needs to do and we need to support. So, you know, uh, bottom line is, is the Hydra is going to have another head that comes up. It's not going to affect their transition, if you will. Their government will move on uh, and be just as radical as they ever were. Now, if you want to mm -hmm. be conspiratorial, um, Khomeini's son is now up. There were two people who could have taken over for Ali Khomeini, the Islamic Supreme Council. Remember, the president is not that powerful. The the ultimate authority in Iran and theocracy is, is Khamenei. And Khamenei's successor was supposed to be Raisi. Raisi now is gone. And if you are all about palace intrigue, which I don't think I agree with, I agree with my colleague that ultimately this is probably uh, storms, this is probably mechanical error, uh, mechanical problems, et cetera. But ultimately, this does put Khomeini, Khomeini's son in line to become the next successor. Yeah, I have a feeling this theory might start swirling around sure. in the news cycle here. I'm glad you brought it up, something I'm sure we'll discuss moving forward. Dr. Zudi Jasser, Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb, gentlemen, I'm sorry we're out of time. Stop back soon. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right.